This is Ibon Studio Podcast Show, episode 21. I am your humble host, Kalex. Today, our new guest is Cornelia Ajason. She is the CEO and founder of Mind Catalyst. It's where they build custom-made app of your choice across different platforms and emerging technologies including ISO, Android, augmented reality, blockchain, AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning, whereabouts, and IoT, which is Internet of Things. Canela helps organizations and entrepreneurs build their minimal viable products, MVP, iterate to product market fit and scale. And for those people who have ideas for a tech product that they would like to bring to life, they have an upcoming better virtual accelerator where participants are taken through the process of going from idea to prototype. Registration should be open by now. Tell us about yourself or your background. Mm-hmm. Sure, yeah. So, um, you know, my name is Cornelia Jasson, and I've been in the uh, software technology hardware space uh, for well over 20 years. <laughs> and uh, I actually transitioned primarily into uh, product based services, uh, meaning um, in the emerging technology space, uh, meaning uh, software and hardware for like Internet of Things. Um, wearables, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, um, machine learning, AI, um, and we do a lot of that type of work as well as blockchain. Um, so we do work that is more purposeful uh, in the sense that, um, you know, we're not about technology for technology's sake. That's just not something that I just fundamentally um, not agree with. I think technology is a medium uh, to allow um, businesses, uh, citizens, people in general to uh, have an easier um, life. So it's about really uh, using technology as a medium to enhance or to ease uh, challenges um, and, op- and also exhaust opportunities that we have in um, daily living, uh, business, uh, healthcare, um, uh, education, um, security, uh, everything in that realm. And so um, when I left my firm, um, I left um, uh, um, Capgemini um, in 2011, I decided to start my own firm, um, which is my catalyst, so that I could actually focus on uh, products that really uh, are, have meaning and, and products that are really solving real problems as opposed to just, you know, tech, using products just using technology for technology's sake. So I could be more intentional about the types of clients that I actually engage with and also be intentional about how to utilize um, best the technology that's out there uh, in, ter- in terms of the emerging technologies from a global perspective. Wow, great. Second question is about your business. Mm-hmm. You are the CEO and founder of Mind Catalyst. And I check your website. Mm-hmm. It's a very nice site. I like it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. And um, you build custom apps, but instead of me telling you on the different platforms that emerges in technology, including ISO and Android, you tell us about your business and tell us how you generate revenue. Sure. So the business is focused again on um, helping clients, uh, Fortune 500 clients, uh, nonprofit clients, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, as well as just startups uh, to uh, maximize, you know, emerging technologies in terms of the products that they're trying to build or building uh, and, and, and position them in a realm that they are really solving a real a challenge or problem that we are facing and, and you know, whatever society and also as it relates to business, education, um, health care, all the various sectors. And so uh, in the business, we actually follow a particular framework. We're a pretty uh, agile environment to begin with, uh, a very agile and very lean. Uh, we, are, um, we have um, associates that are here in the Atlanta area. We also have some associates who are in uh, India as well as Ukraine. Uh, and we're looking to... Um, um, develop some associates, associates meaning designers and developers, um, product managers, um, 
that are in somewhere in the continent of Africa, West Africa. So we haven't necessarily uh, identified where that location is going to be at this point, but we are looking at that right now. Um, so we follow a framework um, that I've created over the years in working um, with managers of consulting companies uh, such as Ursi Young, Cap Gemini. I'm sorry? Oh, go, ahead. go ahead. I am just enjoying the conversation. Oh, sure. <laughs> sure. So, um, uh, you know, in working with those companies, I had an opportunity to uh, develop a framework for myself and uh, in terms of how my firm would do um, do our bidding in terms of do the work that we do uh, with our client base. And it has three um, three uh, focused areas, uh, one being strategy. That's the focus of the first, first uh, portion of our framework. And that's really where we help clients to uh, define um, really define or redefine the mission and the vision of their product, um, as well as the you know, personas, you know, who's going to be using your product, you know, and, and who will benefit from your product as a solution to their particular problem. Because really, without a problem that you're solving in terms of a product, you really don't have a business value or business case for the product. So you must have a, um, a tangible and viable um, you know, solution um, that you're solving for a particular persona or, or uh, client. Now, the next phase in our, our strategy portion is really, you know, what problem are you solving um, and making sure that that's really clear um, and then also uh, the solution details like how your product actually will resonate with um, the client-based customers that you're going to be uh, engaging the, the product with. Um, so our next phase um, in the framework is roadmap. Uh, and in the roadmap, we, def- we help clients to define, you know, one to three features um, that, um, that their, their product actually has as part of it. Uh, the next is the, the goals and the KPIs. And then the last uh, portion of, this, of the uh, roadmap is for us is the time frame or the timeline and the, and the uh, milestones. Um, this is particularly um, important, the roadmap section of our framework, because we really try to get clients to focus on developing an MVP. So that stands for minimal viable product. And so when you have a minimal viable product, as opposed to uh, you know getting out into the space with a product that has all the bells and whistles, you have the opportunity to really focus in on just getting just the key functionality and features that you need to get customers acquisitions and customer buy-in, feedback, evaluations. And so when you're able to do that, you're not, first of all, you're keeping a, you're able to maintain a viable budget for, you know, getting the work done in terms of your product, getting your product out into the market space. But then you're also able to get a targeted pool of users, super users that can engage with your product and give you feedback to ensure that it actually meets some of the KPIs that you had uh, forecast initially when you started the product. Uh, and also it gives you the opportunity to pivot and make changes and tweaks as you uh, are, are evaluating and getting feedback from your customer base. Um, the last section within our framework is execution, of course. And so an execution is really just building the product uh, in an iterative fashion and then launching it and then pitching it. And so most people think that um, when you're building the product, again, you're going to build an MVP, which is your minimal viable product. So you're not building the entire uh, process out. What you're doing, again, if I were to reference the roadmap, is you're, you're just doing the, the very beginning of the product, and then all other features of functionality will, will lie within the, the, the longer-term plan or roadmap of the product. Uh, in execution, you're able to do it in terms of building it in iterative fashion because we utilize uh, the roadmap but we utilize mainly the MVP um, designated features and functionality, typically one to three, so that we're able to um, not confuse a lot of users with a lot of different feedback. Most people don't realize, um, or maybe we've forgotten, that when we looked at Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or any of the other applications that we all are, you know, family names, we all know about, um, they really didn't look anything like they look today when they first started, right? They were very primitive and very, um, really didn't have a lot of features just as functionality uh, to boot. They really came out with as an MVP, and over time, along the road of their roadmap, were, um, w- that's where they had the opportunity to actually grow and evolve as uh, customers and evaluations and feedback were actually you know, got, uh, provided to them so that they can actually implement and also then expand and scale from there. Um, the last portion of that is the launching and the pitching. Uh, so launching, of course, we have a, pro- a phase of which we launch uh, products. We have, uh, we have the MVP phase and we launch products. We typically launch them and we're 
that um, that we have a a private session where we're launching where we have just a few key users who are going to be uh, keen to look at that and then provide feedback in terms of your product itself and do some testing, do some feedback evaluation where, you know, the user, the the, um, the owner of the product is going to be more, doing more of the evaluation to see how the person is engaging with their product um, and then taking notes to see where the nuances and where the hang-ups or hook-ups or, or things that people are having some issues with uh, and making note of those for, for future changes in the future. Um, and usually we have a pitch at the end. Some people, um, I'm not really a big fan of people running out to get um, venture capital funding or angel funding or any type of funding initially. I am purposely, um, on a personal level, more interested in people bootstrapping and really organically growing their, their audience and growing their customer acquisition such that they can really prove the concept of their product uh, before going out and, and getting um, or seeking uh, venture capital funding. It really helps when people get a chance to you know, show any, any with the uh, investors that they have XYZ number of users and they've actually done the work and, and done, you know, put the sweat in to really make sure that they've done the bootstrapping to make sure that their customer acquisitions is actually up in numbers before going to uh, any would be uh, investors. Great. Wow. In the ball, okay. you give me everything, including the accelerator. <laughs> <laughs> Which I was about to touch, but you knock it out so fast and so easy. It was well said. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I uh, do accept that um, the accelerator is a very big opportunity for startups and founders. So tell us when it will be opening, when is registration will be opening, and uh, before I go into the next question. Yeah, so um, the, the virtual real estate uh, accelerator, since you tell you a little bit about that, uh, with the virtual ex- uh, accelerator, um, the three phases of which I just spoke about, we actually uh, run through those three phases with um, all size clients, whether it's a, a smaller client uh, to uh, our small business clients. And so uh, in developing the virtual uh, accelerator, uh, we thought, you know, it would really be helpful if we can actually run this with, um, with clients that are smaller based, but also virtual so they can really tap into clients that are really global, right? So it doesn't matter where they're located, they can be a part of the accelerator. And so what we're doing right now is I'll, I'll be hosting a number of uh, webinars um, just to get people knowledgeable about what, what this accelerator is going to be about and how it's going to run and what, how we can get this, get our products out in the market space. Um, because we are going to go from idea to prototype. We're not going to go to full-fledged uh, application. But at the end of the, the uh, accelerator, uh, people will walk away with a roadmap. And they also walk away with a clickable prototype. And so that clickable prototype can be used to um, let people know about the products that they're actually creating so they can actually see and touch and feel, look and engage with it. Um, they may want to partner with them to help them to expand the idea, or they may want to go out to venture capital funding if that's their, if that's their, their, if that's their choice, or they could actually go ahead and, and develop it with a developer if that's their choice as well. And so we're looking to launch this um, in late summer, so it will be sometime in July when this will launch, and uh, you will be seeing uh, ads and information about that um, coming soon. Wow. I very much looking forward to that accelerator. To be Wonderful. Here. Good. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> when it comes to, before you mention about the product development and MVP, which is the initial um, framework, one to three pieces of the product, um, what does it take for founder to actually get an idea like a software into your hand and is it required any payment up front for you all to work with the fund or when is it come along when financial part comes along for you uh yeah so in terms of ideas i mean really the ideas is I mean, you know of course in terms of the accelerator or even working with us um people have to have some sort of an idea what they want to do uh, in some cases they may not have an idea and that, that, that that's not part of the uh, accelerator accelerator is where people already have an idea they want to move, move forward with but it's if someone isn't part of the accelerator and they don't have an idea, they have this kind of fuzzy or they're still kind of thinking that through, uh, we do help them to um, 
yeah. ideate around some tangible, viable ideas that makes the best sense for the type of work that they want to do or the type of um, uh, people that they want to work with in terms of customers, customer bases. Um, we do help them with that uh, quite a bit. Uh, in terms of the accelerator, um, yes, there, there will be a cost of the accelerator, um, and I'm not sure, I hope, I hope I'm answering your question correctly, but there will be a cost of the accelerator, and we'll have all that information. Uh, we're actually kind of working that out right now. Well, most accelerators are free, and when startups are moving on, it's usually uh, trying to find themselves into an accelerator where they will receive some kind of um, investment or equity in mm-hmm. return. Uh, but you said it went into your accelerator, there will be a fee to earn into the accelerator. Uh, so, what, yeah. so my next question to you is how do you go about uh, charging the other funders who do not have, who are not part of the accelerator but just have uh, an idea, they have a prototype also and uh, mm-hmm. they want to move on with that to try to face the audience or to get engagement? Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, um, a lot of accelerators aren't free. Um, I don't know. I know from from my perspective, and also what you're getting as part of this accelerator, uh, it wouldn't be free because we are taking you, you know, helping you with your idea in terms of finessing your idea, and there's a curriculum that you're going to go through to help you to do that, and we're going to help you with that. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, at the end of the accelerator, when you're finished that eight weeks, uh, you're walking away with a prototype in your hand, a prototype that is um, that is showing that you can show to any investor, any user, any developer, and say, hey, I want this built, and this is how it looks. So it, it looks and feels like your app, like your software application, or it looks and feels it has a cat. If it's a hardware application or if it's a hardware device, it's all catted out already. We've already catted it out, and we've already vetted it, uh, the idea with a um, sample of users already. Uh, and then also you're getting your roadmap as well. Uh, and you're getting a pitch deck. So you're having the ability to learn how to pitch. We would have already developed that pitch deck for you. So you're getting those three components at the conclusion of the, um, of the program. Now, in terms of uh, equity, uh, we are not taking any equity uh, in terms of uh, our clients uh, in the first phase of our uh, launch of the uh, accelerator. We will be doing that later on as things evolve. 